The Beach Watchers program is a citizens-based program focused on uh, making our community more capable of taking care of itself. Uh, we, as a WSU Extension program, have really focused our skills at working with volunteers, and this program has turned into a premier volunteer program for Washington State University. Our goal is to see it throughout all of the counties here in the Puget Sound. Uh, we're working very closely with the Puget Sound Partnership and, uh, and the legislature to try to make that happen. Let's turn to uh, Jim Summers and Bob Buck. Gentlemen, you've both been uh, honored by NOAA as environmental heroes. What heroic acts have you done? Jim and I were singled out for this award, but, you know, it belongs to the whole team and the whole organization that put this together. I mean, look at, you can see on the video here how much teamwork it takes to get this job done and gathering all that data that the researchers need to make important decisions about salmon recovery. We began a collaborative project with the fish biologists at NOAA Fisheries four years ago, and their interest was in determining the use of the pocket estuaries and nearshore of Woodby Island uh, by juvenile salmon. We began at that time a seining effort going out twice a month from February until June, capturing, counting, and measuring juvenile salmon, and then releasing them, of course. It's really uh, a great opportunity, I think, for the Puget Sound Partnership to have a program like Beach Watchers on board because, as uh, Bob and Jim have, have noted, uh, the science of Puget Sound is really critically important to understand that, and, and the partnership is very interested in monitoring and what's going to happen out there, and are we making a difference? And uh, there aren't enough researchers to do it. We need to involve the citizens, and uh, we have fine folks like this that are really capable of helping and, and uh, magnifying researcher efforts, and so it's a, it's a great partnership with the Puget Sound Partnership. We're looking at the actual chemicals and the concentrations that young fish are exposed to and what we're finding unfortunately is that they are causing damage to young fish and so this is a, a question that's been asked before but no one's really been able to prove this one way or another we know that chemicals are in our waters our surface water systems in mixtures but at very low concentrations and the prevailing thought was that they're at such low concentrations they couldn't possibly be having an effect on animal life such as salmon and what we've found is that that's not the case. Some chemicals singly, even at low concentrations, are causing damage. But what we're really finding, the important finding, I think, is that we're finding that mixtures of insecticides in particular um, at these low concentrations act synergistically. So in other words, they, they act more than additively, and it's something we can't predict to cause irreversible damage on salmon. I think a lot of people would assume it's the large pesticide users, the agricultural sector that really would have this kind of impact, but I understand some of these are common household pesticides. Yes, and, and, and urban use and homeowner use is an important source of the pesticides in waters where salmon are living, particularly in Puget Sound, for example, with, with quite a huge you know, urban footprint. Um, and so many of these compounds, well, some of them are no longer actually registered for use by homeowners, but many of them still are. And they're commonly applied on lawns uh, as fleet control products on pets. And from there, they get into the water when it rains. So I, as a homeowner, even though I'm using what I think is a small amount, may be contributing to a large problem. Potentially. It's potentially a death by a thousand cuts. You know, we have a million or more people living in this area. There are several million more coming, supposedly, in the next 10 or 20 years. And that has its cumulative effect as far as what goes into the water. You're on the science panel for the uh, Puget Sound Partnership. Right. Uh, are you hoping this research will help inform some of the decisions that need to be made in terms of restoring Puget Sound? Yes, exactly, because a lot of these chemicals end up in the Puget Sound through runoff. They, they, they enter our rivers and streams, and then they flow into the Puget Sound and cause damage to life in the Sound itself. And obviously runoff and, and, and the, the health of our freshwater systems is, is very important to the Puget Sound. Um, and so, yes, this is definitely a part of our thinking within the science panel and the Puget Sound Partnership. Uh, to look at these kinds of issues as well as other issues. Thanks, John. Welcome. Thank you.